Hey, what's up? I'm Losho, and welcome to my channel. So, it's 2019, this is my first video of the year, and I thought I'd do something a little bit special, a little bit different. Uh, as you can see, I'm on my couch, <laughs> and um, that's because that's where my new laptop is set up for now. And I wanted to do something a little different. I need some theme music for this channel, and I could just as easily download a piece of music from a free music library and use that as my theme music, but I'm a musician. I think it would go quite amiss if I didn't try my hand at composing and creating my own music. So I'm going to do exactly that. Now, I had had some ideas about should I write a new piece of music or should I use a pre-existing piece of music I've already composed. I decided to go the latter route because I have a pretty vast library of unused riffs and ideas and uh, I just wanted to do something quick and simple and I, I have a pretty good riff to use in mind. All right, now I had tried to do this with a screen capture program earlier on, but um, that did not work as well as I had hoped it would. So here we are. We're just gonna do this, me filming the screen. Now I'm gonna start by just showing you guys what I'm gonna be using as my song. So take a moment here, open up Guitar Pro 7 and my YouTube channel theme. So here you can see we've got sort of a 3-4 section with uh, some cymbals, then a heavier main riff, and this is all going to be done on an 8 string guitar, so really heavy stuff. Then after that riff we got just a bit of a solo, and end. Now I've already made a MIDI track of just the drum parts, so we're gonna go ahead and set up a new track with our MT power drum instrument now. Now, MT Power Drum Kit is completely free, as you can see up here, and I, I actually very much recommend this if you're just doing basic demos and sort of small-time recordings like this and not planning on doing anything too extreme. Now, I don't really do too much to add to this. Um, I might throw in a little bit of reverb after the fact, but for now, we're just going to leave this as it is. Now, I'm going to insert my media file. Now, mind my convoluted file organization system. There it is, YouTube channel theme drums MIDI. And let's just see how it sounds. Very nice, very nice. Alright, so now I've got my guitar, which is my I've been as RG8 8 string, which as you can see has a Seymour Duncan Nazgul set up in the bridge and is otherwise bone stock. Alright, so now we're going to set up our first guitar track. Alright, so now as you can hear, you just have the pure clean sound of the guitar right now because there's nothing else coming through, just the guitar. That's obviously not the tone we're going to want for this, so we're going to go in and we're going to pick an amp simulator. And the amp simulator I like to use for all of these productions 
is another free piece of software. It's called the Emissary by Ignite Amps. And as you can see, it has an interface that looks a lot like a real amp head. Now, I'm going to start by flipping the channel over to the red channel. You can hear that it introduced a bit of noise. Now, on its own, this is not going to sound very good. It kind of sounds like a fart. That's because it needs a cabinet simulator. So I'm going to use Rosen Digital's Pulse, which is a free cabinet simulator uh, loader. There's a loader for cabinet impulse responses, and then you can download your own impulse responses to load into it. So, I'm using an impulse response that actually comes from my Hughes & Kettner TubeMeister 18 amp. A proper tube amp. So that sounds a little bit more like a regular guitar amp. However, it still needs a little bit of a boost. So, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to add this, the TSB-1, which is another free piece of software from Ignite Amps. This is essentially an overdrive pedal being simulated, and I like to set mine so that the drive is at minimum, and everything else is basically at 12 o'clock. And you can hear what that adds to the sound. <laughs> It takes that basic emissary sound that I was using and just adds a little bit more growl to it. Now just to get rid of some of that extraneous noise that you're hearing, I'm going to use Rea Gate, which is a noise gate that comes free with Reaper. See? And that took care of that. <laughs> Now, the sound does need a little bit more tweaking, which I'm going to do with this equalizer. So I always like to start by setting a low shelf, and I like to set that nice and low. I like to basically get rid of everything below about 150 hertz, more or less. It's always a little bit challenging to get that right. And then I do the same for the highest frequencies. I get rid of everything about 12,000 hertz and higher. That's just so that the cymbals and bass drum gets a little bit more room to breathe in the mix. Now this is going to be the rhythm track, which means that we're actually going to be starting at this bar of 4-4. Four, four. So, let's get started on recording the first rhythm track. Always remember, turn on your metronome. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a second guitar track. And we're basically going to set this one up exactly the same way. I'm going to start with my Tube Screamer. Now I'm going to do this in the proper order of the signal chain. I'm going to add the Emissary. We're going to add our cabinet impulse response. 
we're going to add our noise gate and we're going to add our EQ. We're going to do the same thing that we did for the first track and just get rid of anything below 150 hertz. Now it's not exact, I'm doing 160 and when you see I drag it down it kind of just does whatever. And above 12,000. Now I'm going to take that first guitar track we recorded and set the pan all the way to the left. And then I'm going to pan this track all the way to the right. And we call that double tracking. And that just means that you're, you're taking your guitar parts and you're doubling it, which makes it sound even beefier, even heavier. So you can clearly hear the strumming of my real guitar like acoustically in the room quite clearly because I'm not mixing this at a very high volume. I'm, I'm actually talking quite a bit louder than the speakers are playing this. So let's play this again. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm doing a little bit of tone sculpting because I didn't do any EQing at the amp yet. So I've done essentially the same thing for both tracks. I've brought up the master volume for the lead channel. I brought up the presence a little bit to add a little bit more high end, a little bit more clarity. Uh, same with the treble and the high mids. I've rolled back some of the low mids a bit just to cut down on some of the boominess, but brought up the bass a little bit to keep the beefiness of the tracks there. So. That's a bit of a vast improvement over what it sounded like before I did that. Alright, so now we're going to do that little intro bit that I haven't recorded anything on yet. And that's going to be a new track as well, which we're going to arm and monitor. We're not going to use the TSB one for this, because this is more of a clean sort of patch. But we are still going to use the Emissary because it does have a clean channel. And then we're going to add our impulse response as we did last time. Now the difference here is this is much quieter. I want a little bit more treble, a bit more mids, and quite a bit more bass. We're going to record this on the neck pickup. So I'm going to add a couple of uh, new items that we haven't used yet. This is a variety of sound plugin called Epic Verb and it is a reverb. Now it starts off with the dry wet knob already at maximum, so we're gonna bring that down to about half.
Maybe just a little bit more. Now, as if the reverb wasn't enough, we're going to add some delay as well. That was a little bit much delay there, so we're going to decrease the wet signal just a little bit. Let's bring this down to three eighth notes. That works. All right, so now we're going to add our EQ. And it's going to be the same thing. We're going to roll off the lowest parts of the EQ spectrum. And roll off the highest parts. Now, I think we could still use a little bit more volume, but I'm also going to add some more presence and a bit of depth. And I'm going to bring up the gain a bit. That's sounding pretty good. All right, let's go and record that part. Excellent. Let's hear how that sounds. Excellent. All right. So now we're on to the last track for the guitar. And that's going to be our lead guitar solo bit. So we're going to start with, of course, our TSB-1 from Ignite Amps. I'm actually going to put the boost on this time. We'll see how that works. We might take it off later if we find it doesn't work. But now we're going to add that delay to our sound again. Because this is our lead guitar tone and we want something that sounds really musical and really cool. So, we're going to set that to three eighth notes again. And we're going to go back to our bridge pickup. Perfect. All right. Okay, so that's where we're going to start recording our solo. Well, that was a bad take. Let's try that again.
last lick was not as clean as I would have wanted it to be. But that's okay, we can punch that in. I'm just gonna get rid of the bit where that lick would start. And let's hear how that seamlessly transitions. You can't even tell that there's a break there. So that's the last of our guitar tracks, and then we're going to move on to bass. Alright, so for our bass track, I've got this Squire Affinity Series P bass. Probably the cheapest bass you can get. I call this my sticker bass because, well, duh. And um, I have this tuned right now to B, E, A, D, like the bottom four strings of a five-string bass. So, without further ado, let's move on to tracking our bass part. So I'm going to start with our bass amp. And Ignite Amps, <laughs> I'm totally shilling for Ignite Amps now, has this SHB-1, which is sort of their 1300 watt extreme bass head simulator. <laughs> Now that actually sounds pretty good on its own, but we're also going to add our speaker simulator. This time I'm going to look for an impulse response that is specific to bass amps, and I found this Ampeg SVT. Okay, I like that one, the Ampeg SVT Beta 252. Now, I'm going to add Ria Comp, which is a compressor. Now, I don't know much about how to set the compressor on these, but I know that this one has a bass setting. Now, I'm actually going to add that TSB1 overdrive just for a little bit of added growl. All right, let's go into our amp and set up our tone. Bring up the volume. Bring up our treble and our mid. Now I'm gonna turn the deep and the bright switch on. Alrighty, I'd say we're ready for our bass track. So there we go, that's our bass track. Let's hear how it all sounds put together. I'm going to turn off the metronome, that way you can just hear the piece.
All right, there we go. That is our finished theme song. Now, if you're going to be like me, don't be like me. Actually save your project. So now, just one last step, we're going to render this to a WAV file. And there you have it. A new theme song for my channel. Thank you guys for all subscribing, and I hope uh, to bring you some more quality content like this throughout 2019. Thank you.